My list was uh, County Attorney White. Do you want to give us an update on Senate Bill 524? Um, as you all discussed at your work session um, last week, I know that you had a pretty comprehensive report on um, all of the bills that passed in the legislature. Um, you did have a pretty robust discussion about the impact of that bill, specifically on Pinellas County. Um, we did have conversations about potential causes of action that could uh, be forwarded by the county. Um, I'm happy to go over those again here or ask uh, or answer um, any additional questions that you may have. Uh, but the one um, pertinent update uh, in between Thursday and today is that that bill was forwarded to the governor and signed into law. So it is effective as of now because that bill did become law um, upon the governor's signing. Questions, comments? Mr. Chair. Mr. Flowers. Um, I just um, just wanted to correct something that was stated. Um, the language that is in SB 524 um, did not address that the issue with us was term limits. It simply categorized those county commissions who had term limits and were charter counties versus those who do not have term limits in charter counties. Um, the other uh, comment that I would like to make, I won't say position is, um, there was a concern of utilizing taxpayer dollars for this specific reason um, to address this. Um, I support having our legal uh, department represent um, the board in this because it because of how in my opinion it singles out specifically Pinellas County if it was something that was across the board for all 67 counties then I may have a different take on it um, and utilizing staff um, to do this in my opinion it's no different than the $1 million that was set aside by the governor within the bill that addresses redistricting because $1 million of taxpayer money will be spent to represent the governor uh, and the legislature when it comes to defending the redistricting maps that were approved. And so I don't think that this would be outside of the boundaries of utilizing resources for an appropriate position should that should the request pass on today so i just wanted to make those those comments i also just want to say briefly thank you to jewel um, i've been conferring with her uh, from time to time throughout the process um, i am somewhat disappointed because my boundary lines really didn't change so you know to say that this is being done because i have people that I'm representing who did not have a chance to vote for me, that is incorrect. Um, the people who are in my district now were in my district then. They're the same people. Um, and so I just think that um, I'm disappointed that 20 months in um, that I'm having to, to run again because of a specific piece of legislation that was attached to uh, a bill um, made it through. It wasn't its own separate. It was attached. And, um, and I will say publicly that I am very disappointed in some of the um, conversation, the dialogue, the verbiage that has been directed towards my colleague, Commissioner Seal. I have a tremendous amount of respect for her. I have had that for a number of years. I've known her for a number of years. And she has a caring, concerned heart. Um, she is fiscally um, conservative. She wants answers to her questions and um, whether it is true or not, um, it is just my sense that um, that this was done to, to, to not be genuine but to be disingenuous. And um, so I just wanted to make those comments. Um, as I shared, I have no problem with running again. Um, I have no problem with um, addressing the issues that are before this county. Um, I believe all of us work hard um, on the things that have been presented before us. But I do think that this certainly erodes 
the separation of powers. And I believe this time that it went a little too far. And so I fully support uh, having legal, it, should that pass, support us in this endeavor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I have a couple things that concern me about this. Um,